And plans for a $65 million school on the grounds of St. Peter's College at Tugra for students with disabilities uh, moving ahead. The Catholic Diocese of uh, Broken Bay says the uh, Eileen O'Connor School would include up to 200 students from kindergarten to year 12, as well as support classes located here and in Sydney. The government has already allocated $5.3 million to the state significant development. So what's the evidence that this sort of model of education will benefit the children involved? Dr. David Roy is a lecturer from the School of Education at UON and uh, has some insight into this. Good morning. Good morning to you. Great to be here. When you hear about such plans, what are your first reactions? I I'm, I'm not surprised. Um, the ideal is always going to be for inclusion where children with a disability are mixing with all the other groupings within a classroom. But we also know that the reality of what is available in the way we run schools just now makes that quite difficult. And there is a need for uh, many families who want to be part of a school system but don't feel that their kids would necessarily survive and, and work well within a public school, uh, just in the normal classroom. So this is a stepping stone, I think, as a way towards inclusion if they do integrate them as the way they're describing. Is the private sector pulling its weight? We see if a, a, a child is on the spectrum and, and uh, maybe have difficulties or behavioural issues at in the private system, they they often kick them out and they end up in the public system. They're, they're doing all the heavy lifting and not getting the, the big bucks, I guess. Well, I mean, that is one of the issues. A lot of the, the public school systems are, are taking on both kids. They're underfunded, understaffed, and often far too big and don't have the resources. The reason that some of the independent schools are setting up these almost schools within schools, if that's what they're doing, is because that's how the funding system works for them to set up a separate school. I'm really hoping that within this school, there won't be a fence dividing the new uh, special disabilities in school with the mainstream school, but there will allow a lot of flow between the groupings of kids, whether it be at recess and lunchtime, also integrating during zone carnival, athletics and swimming and school camp. But there is a growing need and the Catholic and the independent sectors are starting to see that need and, and there is money there available for him to get from parents. So it's a challenging uh, situation and the Royal Commission almost identified this because they were split on the way forward, whether we go for school inclusion or we go for segregated settings or this hybrid model, which seems to be what the Broken Bay Diocese is, is looking towards. ABC Central Coast, we're speaking with uh, Dr. David Roy about plans for uh, a new school to support children who may have a disability at uh, St. Peter's. It's an interesting debate, isn't it? Uh, what, what's best practice? What, what are some of the models uh, that we can look at to, to make sure that we give kids a fair go? Well, the best practice, if you look to towards Europe rather than what we're doing in Australia is actually school inclusion where we have smaller class sizes, we have more uh, teacher aides and, and, and teachers all being fully qualified in supporting children with a disability. But that costs money and we're talking millions towards billions of dollars to rejig our whole education system in the public sector to allow that to happen. It's why there's this 25 plus lag time in the Royal Commission to say that we need to do this. I don't see that happening in the near future unless we make radical change in education. So for many families, uh, and I, I have a family with disability as well, this is a good way forward. Um, it's working up in Maitland. Uh, at the moment up here in the Hunter Valley, there's um, a Christian school who have taken this model and it's been very successful. I worry that they're going to make it a very large school of 200 plus kids. And that can sometimes take away from the personal, individualised touch that these schools need. Um, one of the one of the interesting things that actually helps to make kids feel included is if both schools have the same uniform, because then the kids with a disability don't look actually visually different as part of the community of the bigger school. Look, you know, the, the stories are always the way to learn, aren't they? And when you mm -hmm. see 
see this working properly, um, you see integration yeah. working properly, it's it's a, a very heartwarming thing. I remember going to a, a school soccer game, two teams battling it out, and there's Chertsey School, a little, a little school on the <laughs> Central Coast full of kids, and I think just about every player in their team had a cochlear implant, yeah. um, obviously born with uh, profound deaf, uh, deafness and, and uh, battling their guts out as tough as teak and uh, doing their school proud, you know, alongside those kids who didn't have a uh, hearing disability or, or whatever, you know, and it just, it just really, it was just something so wonderful about it, uh, David. You know, it, it just, it, that's that's the goal, I think, isn't it? I mean, and they yeah, did their school well, proud. They 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 smashed them. You know, they were great. Absolutely. What we have to remember is we often see disability and we look at the deficit, at, at the difference. Sometimes we forget the real uh, the, the real similarities kids have and the strength that, that when you have a disability, there can be an area where there's a challenge for you, but quite often many kids then have some other area which then becomes their strength. Um, so we've got to look at, at both things, and I think the, this is a good way forward, not the ideal, but it's better than families feeling they have nowhere to go and removing kids from the, the formal education system to homeschool. Because one of the reasons we have a 39% increase per year in homeschooling in New South Wales is that families don't feel there's anywhere for their kids other than for them to educate them at home, which is a challenge for the kids, which is a challenge for the parents and a challenge for the community. So I'd rather this was happening than nothing, if that makes sense. But a lot of families with children with disabilities mm -hmm. really are, are, are battling. Um, yeah. You know, they're not going to get the kids into Cranbrook. They're not going to get the kids yeah. into Knox because they're spending all of their time and money trying to, to look after children with disabilities. And sometimes it's a number uh, you'd know what sort of drain on the uh, financial resources of families and, and the emotional resources of families it is. You know, how is this pie in the side sky to think the private sector will um, be philanthropical and, and let them in? Well, I, I don't think it is philanthropical. I don't think that it, it's a pity thing. I actually think that for some of the independent and non-public schools, this is part of their ethos. I have noticed that it tends to be within the Catholic sector and within some of the the strongly Christian-based schools, as well as some of the other faith-based schools. So they'll give them some, some financial help? Well, they actually see this as, as an ethos for them to bring kids in at a low cost because they see that children with a disability are as equal a part of the community as anyone else. And it does slightly frustrate me that, that there's a judgment that kids with disability cannot be intellectually, academically strong. And so some of the, to we say, wealthier independent schools reject them. And that, to me, is the real form of discrimination. And I would love to see more equity across the board. So I, I like the fact that those schools in the public and in the independent sector who've got a strong ethos of community care are the ones that are starting to lift and support the load. Mm. Well, you know, if they can afford to get in, that's the yeah. that's the big issue. There'll have to be yeah. some sort of subsidy or something, uh, surely, if the private sector is going to take more uh, children from this cohort. Yeah, although well, there there's going to be a cost. And again, that, that's part of our wider education problem, isn't it, in Australia, that we are creating this have-and-have-not education system of the more money you have, the more resources, when it could be kind of equal to all. So th there's, there's part of a bigger picture going on here that we need to really think about who are we providing education for, how much are we valuing it, and are we maybe spending our money in, in the wrong areas when we should be really targeting investment in education across the board to really create a strong community and a future generation who are going to lead the world. All right, so uh, just a Big picture. One, one word or yes, uh, a step in the right direction, this school on the Central Coast? A step in the right direction. Um, not, not the ideal, but for many families, it's going to probably be a lifesaver and it's right. help us to move forward to inclusion. Dr. David Roy, thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. ABC Central Coast, it's Waste Free Wednesday on the way next. And uh, if you've got a suggestion for...